All right, and so in this video, we're going to be going over investigation 9.1.3. So here, um, one way to think of inequalities is like a comparison. So here we have 1 is less than 4. And we know this is true because notice that 4 is larger. It's on the right-hand side of the number line. So when we think of the size of a number, the bigger numbers are usually located on the right-hand side. So since 4 is closer to the right, 4 is bigger than 1. But this is going to flip if we multiply both sides by negative 1. So if I change 1 to negative 1 and 4 to negative 4, let's see, times both by negative 1, notice how they switch positions. Positive 4 jumps to negative 4, and positive 1 jumps to negative 1. After flipping both of their signs, notice how negative 1 is now the bigger number. It's further to the right, and negative 4 becomes a smaller number. So again, 4 is usually the bigger number, but once I spin it around, it moves further back, making it the smaller number. And 1 doesn't jump that far, making it bigger than negative 4. So notice that here the inequality sign is going this way, since 4 is bigger. But now the inequality is going to go this way, right? Because um, the inequality sign is going to be facing the negative 1. Again, um, I like to think of this like kind of like the alligator mouth. Um, the mouth of the alligator wants to eat the bigger number. So the mouth is facing towards the negative 1. So same thing over here. Notice that negative 2 is bigger. The alligator mouth is facing towards negative 2. But if I multiply both sides by negative 1, if I make this positive and this positive, positive, notice how they both swap places. 5 becomes bigger, 2 becomes smaller. So again, the alligator mouth is going to be facing 5 because 5 is the bigger number. Okay. So um, later on in this lesson, we'll be focusing on absolute value. But first, let's go ahead and do a little review of inequalities. So basically, the way we solve an inequality is going to be almost exactly the same as when we solve an equation. So I can treat this inequality sign as just like another equal sign. So here, if I want to solve, I need to first get rid of the plus 7 by subtracting 7 on both sides, leaving me with 2x is less than 5. And then if I want to solve for x, I need to divide both sides by 2. Oops, that disappeared. Divide by 2, divide by 2. All right, leaving me with x. And half of 5 is going to be 2.5. So notice that x is going to be less than 2.5. 2.5 is what's called the boundary point. If you think of it in terms of a number line, that's where our inequality starts. So 2.5, so maybe right here. And since x is less than 2.5, the arrow is going to be pointing to the left side, all right? You think of all these values here where my arrow is located. You can think of all these as x. And all the x values has to be smaller than 2.5. You see how it's on the left side? It's smaller than 2.5. So that's what they'll look like on the number line. So to find the direction of the inequality, right? If x is less than, the arrow will point to the left. If x is greater than, oops, greater than, the arrow will point right. Okay. So moving on to a2, let's do another equation. Just like any equation, again, I want to get x by itself, so let's start by canceling plus 8. The opposite of adding 8 is subtracting 8. Positive and negatives cancel each other out. So I'm left with just the negative 3x. The same sign equals 12. Okay. Now here, um, this is the tricky step. Uh, when I divide both sides by negative 3, notice how the signs are changing. This is going from a negative number, but when I divide by negative 3, it's turning into positive x. And 12 divided by negative 3 is starting out as a positive number, and it's changing into negative 4. So here, normally the sign is going this way, right? It's uh, facing the left side. But since I multiply both sides by negative 1, this sign can't be facing the same way anymore. Think back to the warm-up, right? If I'm multiplying both sides by negative 1, the arrow has to face the other way. So for this problem here, oops, here, instead of facing to the left, once I flip both signs, this is now facing towards the right. So whatever used to be bigger becomes a smaller number, and whatever is smaller became the bigger number. So x is less than negative 4, so here's negative 4. So all the x values has to be less than that. So x is probably somewhere over here. Okay. Any of these numbers on the left here will solve this inequality. Oops. Let's go with A3. Oh. Yeah. All right, A3. So 
here, let's go ahead and solve. Um, here I can combine like terms, so negative 4 and positive 1 combine to get negative 3, 9k minus 3. I'm going to keep the same sign, so less than or equal to, less than and then equal. 2k and 4k combined to get 6k, and then we still have the plus 3. So notice that these two numbers here, the whole numbers, combine to get negative 3. The 2k and the 4k combine to get 6k. All right, and now we can solve this equation. Um, normally, we can't solve an equation with x on both or k with on both sides like this. So um, usually, I find it easier to get rid of the smaller k. So let's get rid of all six of these k's by using its opposite. And if I subtract 6k on the right, and you subtract 6k on the left. So I'm left with 3k minus 3 less than or equal to positive 3. Now let's cancel out the minus 3 by adding plus 3 on both sides. Plus 3 plus 3. So I'm left with 3k is greater than or equal to 6. The final step is to divide both sides by 3, divide by 3, divide by 3. K is less than or equal to 2. So K is less than or equal to 2. So here is 2. It can equal 2 or it could be any number that's smaller than 2. So notice how my arrow is going to go this way. All right, any of these X values, anything that's less than 2 is going to solve that inequality. Let's move on to the next section, B1. So here, what if we already know the answer? Here we know that with this inequality, I know that the boundary point is going to be 3. How can I check which way the arrow is supposed to go? Is it, should it be pointing left or should it be pointing right? Let's choose a number on the right. And just for the example, let's say we choose 5. Let's say we choose a number of 5. What happens when I plug 5 back into my inequality? So when I see the letter X, I'm going to replace it with 5. Let's see, 5 plus 2 is 7. I still need to multiply that by 3 and take away from 10. 3 times 7 becomes 21, so 10 minus 21. And then 10 minus 21 is going to be negative 11. And is negative 11 bigger than negative 5? This inequality is not true, right? Negative 11 is probably somewhere all the way on the left. Negative 5 is right here. So negative 5 is definitely bigger, right? So this is not a true statement. So I tried a number on the right and it didn't work. So let's try a number on the left and see if that will give me a true statement. So seeing over here, let's try any number on the left. Uh, for this example, let's just go with negative 3. So negative 3. So I replace x with negative 3. Let's see, negative 3 cancel out with 2. I'm left with negative 1. I still have the negative 3 over here and the 10 minus. Okay. Let's see, negative 3 times negative 1 is positive 3. And positive 10 plus 3 is 13. And is 13 bigger than negative 5? That is true. So notice that when I use a number on the left here, any number over here, when I plugged it in, it may gave a true statement. So I know that the answer has to be on the left side. The arrow has to be pointing to the left because the number over here gave me a true statement. So all my x numbers has to be oops, less than 3. So any x number I pick, has to be less than 3. Notice how the alligator mouth is facing towards 3. 3 is the biggest number, and every answer is going to be smaller than that. Okay, let's try another example. So, uh, which way is my arrow going to point? Let's go and try, like, number 1 here. Let's try a number on the right. So let's plug in 1. 4 times 1 is 4 minus 6, and then 4 minus 6 is negative 2. Is negative 2 smaller than negative 14? This one is not true, right? Negative 2 is right here. Negative 14 is over here. Negative 2 is actually bigger. So the arrow is not pointing this way. Let's try pointing the arrow the other way. Let's try a number over here. Let's say negative 5, just for this example. So let's delete this work. Okay. So uh, if I plug in negative 5, 4 times negative 5 is negative 20 minus 6. And 20 negatives and 6 more negatives make negative 26. And is negative 26 smaller than negative 14? Yep, that's true. Negative 14 is probably somewhere over here. Negative 26 is all the way on the left. So negative 14 is definitely bigger, right? So all my x values has to be smaller than negative 2. My arrow has to be pointing this way. All the x numbers has to be smaller than negative 2. All right, one more checking answer problem. So here we have this inequality, and we know that the boundary point is 5. So let's check a number that's either to the left or right. Um, let's go ahead and go with left first. Let's plug in 0 in this example. Negative 5 times 0 is 0, and 0 plus 2 is 2. 
is 2 smaller than negative 23? This is not true, right? Any positive number is always going to be bigger than a negative number. Positive numbers on the right, negative numbers on the left. So this is not true. Let's try the other way. Let's try a number over here. All right, let's try 6. Let's see. Erase this from before. Negative 5 times 6 is negative 30 plus 2. And then negative 30 plus 2, those cancel out, leaving me with negative 28. And is negative 28 smaller than negative 23? Yep, that's true. So my arrow should be pointing right. All my x numbers have to be bigger than 5. So here's 5. This is pointing to the right. All my x answers over here have to be bigger than 5. x is greater than 5. Okay. Now let's go ahead and focus on absolute value. We're going to shift gears away from inequalities. So uh, think about in the, uh, absolute values. Here we have this biking example. Henry is riding a bike along a straight road. And he gets a call from his mom asking where he is. Henry says he is 7 miles from home. So if this number line represents the road he's traveling on, what are the two possible locations Henry could be so that he's 7 miles away from home? Well, one possibility is he's driving in from the left, or riding his bike in from the left, right? So he's driving from the left and he's right around here. Or the other possibility would be he's coming in from the right. So he could be either 7 over here or negative 7 over here. The reason why these two are possible answers is because if I count the spaces, there are seven jumps to get home here, and there are seven spaces to get home here. So either one of these are correct. So the representation for this equation is the absolute value of x, or in this case, Henry's distance, absolute value of x, has to be seven. His distance, either to the left or to the right, has to be seven units away from home. Right? So that's absolute value. So just like how the answer could be either seven or negative seven, when we think of an absolute value, there are two possible answers. Um, I can either be a positive number, or it could be a negative number. All right, so those are our two possible answers. I can either be riding my bike in from the right side, or riding my bike in from the left side. Either way, the absolute value of 2 would be 2. And even if I'm coming from the left from the negative region, the absolute value would make it positive. So same over here, the absolute value of x, those have two possible answers, either 8 or negative 8. And the absolute value is 16, that can be either be 16 or negative 16. Right, if I'm coming in from the left, the absolute value would change that to a positive number. And if I'm coming to the right, it will just stay a positive number. Okay. So uh, let's continue the story. So Henry continues on his route when his friend Emerson calls asking where he is. Henry says that he is three miles east of my house. So three miles, here's to the east. Great, says Emerson. I am just two miles away from where you're at. All right, I'll see you soon. So what are the two possible positions where Emerson can be? Just like where Henry is when going home, Emerson can be two spots either to the right or two spots to the left. These are the two spots where Emerson can be. So let's go ahead and write an equation that can help us solve um, the location of Emerson. So the difference between Emerson and Henry, again, remember Henry's at three, x is going to be Emerson. The difference between these two has to be only two miles. And the reason why we have the absolute value is that it can be either two miles from the right or two miles from the left. So here we have two possible answers, x minus 3, he is 2 units away from the right, or Emerson could be 2 units away from the left, right? Either way, he was 2 jumps away, 2 hops away to gain to Henry. So, to solve this equation, plus 3 on both sides, x equals 5, which is one of our answers, right? Emerson could be at 5, or if I solve the other one, plus 3 plus 3, x equals 1. Emerson can also be right here, right? 2 hops away from being to Henry. So, these are the two possible answers to where Henry could be. So, when we solve a absolute value, we have two possible situations. This equation could equal positive 16, or this equation could equal negative 16. Because again, when I, oops, minus 5 equals negative 16. So when I plug in either negative 16 or 16 into the absolute value into these two bars, it's going to change whatever's inside here into positive. So you can think of it like I'm either driving in from the right side or driving the road, in, sorry, driving the road from the left side. So let's go ahead and solve this one, plus 5 plus 5, 3x equals 21, and divide by 3, divide by 3, x equals 7. Same thing over here, plus 5 on both sides, this time positive cancel out with negative, positive 5 cancel out with negative 16, that's going to be negative 11. And when I divide by 3, x is going to be negative 11 over 3. Okay. So how can we solve equation with absolute value? <coughs> Equations with absolute value can be split into two possible answers, right? 
there is a possible possible positive answer and a possible negative answer. So again, you can think of it just like solving two equations. One possibility is the answer is coming in from the right, it's positive, or the answer is coming in from the left, it's negative. All right, here we have some practice problems. Let's see, solve for inequality, let's go ahead and distribute. Four groups of negative two is negative eight x. Four times one is plus four, greater than or equal to 20. That's minus four from both sides. Oops, minus four on both sides. So I'm left with negative 8x is greater than or equal to 16. And now I'm going to divide both sides by 8. Negative 8. So I'm left with x greater than or equal to negative 2. So um, why is this one still incorrect? Notice how we did all the steps correctly. Don't forget that for the last step, if I'm changing from negative to a positive, notice, notice how this is negative 8 to positive x. If I'm flipping the sign, don't forget that we need to flip this arrow the other way. Again, we don't always do this. We only do it when we're changing from positive to negative or the other way around. So x has to be smaller than negative 2. So here's negative 2. I'm including that answer. And then x is anything that's smaller than that. So all these numbers back here, those could be possible x answers. Okay, here we go. For a um, absolute value, remember there are two possible answers. I can either get the positive version or the negative version. Again, absolute value of negative 7 makes it positive, and the positive number will also become positive. Okay, so 22 or negative 22, 127 or negative 127. All right, and last question, how do I solve an equation that has two possible um, absolute value answers? So again, this whole thing could be equal to, whoops, plus 3 is equal to 15, or the whole thing could be equal to negative 15. Again, if I'm 15 units from the left side, all right, I'm still 15 spaces away, right? The absolute value, the distance that I need to travel is still going to be 15 units. So minus 3 on both sides, 6x equals 12. Divide both sides by 6, x equals 2. Over here, let's do minus 3 minus 3. 6x equals negative 18. And if I divide by 6, x equals negative 3. All right. So those are the uh, problems going over absolute value and equations. Uh, if you have any questions, just let me know.